get, get it. You don't get it from money. You get it from connection. Now, if that isn't a hazard to this country, how are we going to keep building nuclear weapons? You know what I mean? into the arms industry when we realize we're all one. <laughs> it's going to fuck up the economy. The economy that's fake anyway. 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 <laughs> Which would be a real bummer. You can see why the government's cracking down on the idea of experiencing unconditional love. Once we understand that the integrity of our personal existences are completely dependent on the integrity of everything else in our world, we have truly understood the meaning of unconditional love. For love is extensionality, and seeing everything as you and you as everything can have no conditionalities. For, in fact, we are all everything at once. If it's true that we're all from the center of a star, every atom in each of us from the center of a star, then we're all the same thing. Even a Coke machine or a cigarette butt in the street in Buffalo is made out of atoms that came from a star. They've all been recycled thousands of times, as have you and I. And therefore, it's only me out there. So what is there to be afraid of? What is there that needs solace seeking? Nothing. There's nothing to be afraid of because it's all us. The trouble is we have been separated by being born and given a name and an identity and being individuated. We've been separated from the oneness and that's what religion exploits, that people have this yearning to be part of the overall one again. So they exploit that. They call it God. They say he has rules. And I think it's cruel. I think you can do it absent religion. It's time to claim the unity our outmoded social systems have broken apart and work together to create a sustainable global society where everyone is taken care of and everyone is truly free. Your personal beliefs, whatever they may be, are meaningless when it comes to the necessities of life. Every human being is born naked, needing warmth, food, water, shelter, everything else is auxiliary. Therefore, the most important issue at hand is the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. This can never be accomplished in a monetary system, for the pursuit of profit is the pursuit of self-interest, and therefore imbalance is inherent. Simultaneously, politicians are useless, for our true problems in life are technical, not political. Furthermore, ideologies that separate humanity, such as religion, need strong reflection in the community in regard to its value, purpose, and social relevancy. Hopefully, through time, religion will lose its materialism and basis in superstition and move into the useful field of philosophy. The fact is, society today is backwards, with politicians constantly talking about protection and security rather than creation, unity, and progress. The U.S. alone now spends about $500 billion annually on defense. That is enough to send every high school senior in America to a four-year college. In the 1940s, the Manhattan Project produced the first true weapon of mass destruction. This program employed 130,000 people at an extreme financial cost. Imagine what our life would be like today if that group of scientists instead of working on a way of killing people, worked on a way to create a self-sustaining, abundant world. Life today would be very, very different if that was their goal. 
instead of weapons of mass destruction, it is time to unleash something much more powerful. Weapons of mass creation. Our true divinity is in our ability to create. And armed with the understanding of the symbiotic connections of life, while being guided by the emergent nature of reality, there is nothing we cannot do or accomplish. Of course, we face strong barriers in the form of established power structures that refuse to change. At the heart of these structures is the monetary system. As explained earlier, the fractional reserve policy is a form of slavery through debt where it is literally impossible for society to be free. In turn, free market capitalism in the form of free trade uses debt to imprison the world and manipulate countries into subservience to a handful of large business and political powers. Apart from these obvious amoralities, the system itself is based on competition, which immediately destroys the possibility of large-scale collaborations for the common good, hence paralyzing any attempt at true global sustainability. These financial and corporate structures are now obsolete and they must be outgrown. Of course we cannot be naive enough to think that the business and financial elite are going to subscribe to this idea for they will lose power and control. Therefore peaceful yet highly strategic action must be taken. The most powerful course of action is simple. We have to alter our behavior to force the power structure to the will of the people. We must stop supporting the system. The only way the establishment will change is by our refusal to participate while continuously acknowledging its endless flaws and corruptions. They're not going to give up the monetary system because of our designs of what we recommend. The system has to fail and people have to lose confidence in their elected leaders. That will be a major turning point if the Venus Project is offered as a possible alternative. If not, I fear the consequences. The trends now indicate that our country is going bankrupt. The probability is our country will move toward a military dictatorship to prevent riots and complete social breakdown. Once the U.S. breaks down, all the other cultures will undergo similar things. As of now, the world financial system is on the brink of collapse due to its own shortcomings. The Comptroller of Currency stated in 2003 that the interest on the U.S. national debt will not be affordable in less than 10 years. This theoretically means total bankruptcy for the U.S. economy, and its implications for the world are immense. In turn, the fractional reserve-based monetary system is reaching its theoretical limits of expansion, and the banking failures you are seeing are just the beginning. This is why inflation is skyrocketing, all debt is at record levels, and the government and Fed are hemorrhaging new money to bail out the corrupt system. For the only way to keep the banks going is by making more money. The only way to make more money is to create more debt and inflation. It is simply a matter of time before the tables turn and there is no one willing to take new loans while defaults grow as people are unable to afford their current loans. Then the expansion of money will stop and contraction will begin on a scale never before seen, ending a century-long pyramid scheme. This has already begun. Therefore, we need to expose this financial failure for what it is, using this weakness to our advantage. Here are some suggestions. Expose the banking fraud. Citibank, JP Morgan Chase, and Bank of America are the most powerful controllers within the corrupt Federal Reserve System. It's time to boycott these institutions. If you have a bank account or a credit card with any of them, move your money to another bank. If you have a mortgage, refinance with another bank. If you own their stock, sell it. If you work for them, quit. This gesture will express contempt for the true powers behind the private banking cartel known as the Federal Reserve and create awareness about the fraud of the banking system itself. Two, turn off the TV news. Visit the emerging independent news agencies on the internet for your information. CNN, NBC, ABC, Fox, and all the others present all news pre-filtered to maintain the status quo. 
with four corporations owning all major media outlets objective and